Hi there and welcome to another video on the project corner. Today I'm going to share how I create a risk matrix based on project online data. So this is not the application Microsoft project, but this is the server side version. So let's head over to my personal uh, project online environment. And here you see the project center. The project center has a number of projects in there. And as you can see, here is a little risk icon. So these projects, these four projects have risks associated to them. Now currently risks are stored within the project site, which will be created if you have the correct settings in a project site and default, they will have some nice items there. So let's create a risk new risk for YouTube. So I'm the owner and I'll assign it to my, my manager. And this is an active risk, of course, and we'll set it to quality. So let's set the due date to next year on my birthday. And this is a low probability, but high impact risk. You can further enrich your risk by adding costs and the description, mitigation plan. This is very good that you knew, uh, know uh, mitigation, of course. Then you have a contingency plan, a trigger description, actually a trigger, is this a date or is this a threshold or tasks not completed or other. If I click on save that, well, enter the date in a hmm, different format. All right, Ameri we're going American today. So let's see. Yes. So the new risk for YouTube is here and I will be able to pull that out of the data using our fun pro um, Power BI content pack. So the Power BI content pack is um, a content pack that I've described earlier in uh, my blog posts. Uh, and another thing about the blog post, this video is a companion video on a, a blog post article that I'm going to do. So let's try and refresh the page, refresh data, and I hope to see my new uh, risk popping up here. Yes, there it is, new risk for YouTube. Now this main page, portfolio risks, is actually quite nice. You have a table here, you have your different kinds of risks by category, you have cost exposure, and you have your risks by project owner. And there's also an in-depth uh, report, project risks and issues. And here you see multiple very nice looking um, visuals. But the visual that we're missing is a risk matrix. Well, we have a risk matrix, but we love to have that green color here, that orange color here and red color here. And that's actually quite hard to do. There's no custom visual available in the store at the moment or in the marketplace that actually has a risk matrix the way that we want it to have. So I don't mean something like this. We have your probability on the left side and your uh, impact below. And if there's a low impact and there's a low probability, it will land in the green values. I'm going to share today how you're going to create a risk matrix based on these values, this grid. And I'm going to do that in my own environment. So you'll be able to reproduce this if, as long as you have risks in your project online environment, as long as you have the content pack, you can follow every step that I'm currently doing. So let's go. First of all, we need to edit the risk uh, query. So we're going to add the query and we're going to do that in the advanced editor. 
So currently there's not that much in here. We need to have a multiple values added to this. So what I've done is I created this little neat text file with a new column and query. And that column should actually be a measure, but we'll get to that later. So here is the addition that we need to add. And if you're a member of the uh, Project Corner newsletter, you'll get all these files sent to you. So that's nice as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this and I'm going to paste the added value in here. So what I'm seeing is the token is expected. That is because on this row, you'll need to add a comma. And now there's no syntax errors. The mockup is a bit uh, ugly, but it does the trick does the trick very nicely. So let's have a look what we created because this is actually quite interesting. So first of all, we have the impact grid and the probability grid for uh, the nine grid as well as the 25 grid. Let's move back again to the images because this is a grid of nine cells and this is a grid of 20, uh, 25 cells. So you need to populate every cell with a number. And if you have the impact grid and you have the probability grid, you can actually name every uh, cell value. So these grid values are very important. And then you have the color of the grid and then you have the order ID of the color. We'll get back to the later ones, but for now we have filled the query with interesting information. So we're going to click close and apply. And as soon as the, uh, the query changes have been applied, we can start populating a grid. Because this is already a busy page, I'm going to remove the cost versus cost exposure. And I'm going to enter an image. I'm going to input an image desktop risk matrix. And we're going to show you the nine grid because the 25 grid is pretty big and will take up most of your time. And I'm very sparse on working with your time, of course. So here we go, we have a nice nine grid. And if you have a one, one value, it's actually here. And you have a three, three value, it's actually here because it has the highest impact and the highest probability. Good. So now what we're going to count is not actually the risk ID because then you will have blank values here and we want zero values for if there's no risk there. So we're going to create a new measure. Right click on the risks and click on new measure. measure. And I'm going to grab that ex uh, little text file again here. So risk count, copy, paste. Click on enter. And here I've created my personal measure of risk count. So that's good. Now, how do we populate this risk matrix? We're actually going to create nine card values. And I'm going to speed up the values that I'm going to um, fill in. But let's do the first one together. So a card, I'm going to create that. I'm going to resize it to be exactly the size of one of the grids. So let me just do that here. All right. And I'm going to populate it with the risk count. And I'm going to say, okay, well, this is a nine grid value. So let me find the nine grid impact grid. No probability. So here is the nine grid. This will be a three one value. So we're going to do an advanced filtering here. And if we say this is a three one value, and we're going to apply that. And you'll see that there is actually one risk that has that probability. We're going to change a lot of values here. So again, we're going to speed this up for the next values. We're going to remove the category label. And we're going to make it a bit smaller. 
There we go, 25, that's nice. Okay, so here I'm going to speed up what we're doing. So there we have it. Now we have our risk matrix populated. But if we hover over the risk matrix itself, so with the image, we do want to change that to bring this to the background because this is actually bring to send to back. So if we hover over it, it won't show the picture, but the actual values. So this is very nice. Now I have a risk matrix that is purely populated on, um, on the colors that we wanted. So if we zoom in on Pete, who has just one risk, it will show up here. And we zoom out to Eric, we'll see all them, all of them. And it will navigate to time. We'll see that we have one in red, one in orange, and one in white, uh, green. And the same for cost, also one in red. And the same for quality, also one in red. All right, so how do we zoom in on the ones that are in red and the ones that are in green or the ones in orange? We're going to add a new filter because the governmental phase is not something I'm interested in right now. I'm going to do something that we created earlier with the uh, query and it is uh, the color grid, uh, the nine grid color. Nine grid color is now red, amber and green. So if I select the green ones, the only green values are in here. And if we go to the amber ones, we'll see the middle ones. And if we navigate to the red ones, only the ones on the top right will show up. Very nice. We can do exactly the same for the 25 grid, but we'll use a different uh, grid image as well as the 25 grid color values. We'll still use the risk count because that's uniform, but uh, we'll do the 25 grid. So I could actually show you that uh, really sped up and we're going to do that in the risks for projects. So here we go. I'm going to speed this up again and hopefully it will be a nice uh, montage. So there you have it, your risk matrix in higher detail. And we can also use the, uh, the 25 grid color and have a look at all the red values here. So that's nice, that's nice. And all the amber values here. Now it will say green. And here we go, our two values in green, a couple of values in orange, amber, and here we go, a couple in red. So that's it for today. This was another video on the YouTube channel for the Project Corner. If you liked what I've shown you, please hit subscribe and like the video. And head on over to the Project Corner where the companion blog posts will surely have more information for you to enjoy. With that, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.